these two idea okay yeah okay uh, yes well the radioactive isotope can be put into either form of the reactant whether it's in the let's say Fe plus 2, or it could be put into the Fe plus 3. It was just used as an identifier. So it had no effect on the reaction rate. It was just merely of where you put the label. So experiments were done, uh, sometimes labeling one, sometimes labeling the other. They, they could easily do that. And the main thing is that you wanted to distinguish the two types of systems. In this case, the Fe plus through plus two from the Fe plus three, and it didn't matter whether you started off with a radioactive isotope in one or the other. You still, after the reaction proceeded, you would separate the two ions by certain chemical methods, precipitation, usually of, of the least soluble material, uh, and then you would analyze the precipitate and you would analyze the solution. So it didn't matter where the asterisk started. The results you would get for the re actual reaction rate were, were the same. And I'm trying to remember whether there is a second part to the question. Actually, my problem was uh, uh, with the radioactive elements itself. Uh, when you, uh, I, I, in those reactions which involved the radioactive elements, yes. uh, the electron transfer happened from uh, non-radioactive to radioactive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. The radioactivity played no role at all in the rate of the reaction. It was only used as a label. Hence, uh, they don't have any contribution no, to the free no energy. No, no contribution to the free energy or anything. No. Yeah. Yeah. The radioactive item, the radioactive item atom stayed in the same nuclear level. It was unchanged by the reaction. Thank you. Sir. It was only a label. Yeah. Okay. Sir, this is not pertaining to your uh, chemistry subject, sir. What is the secret of your charismatic personality, sir? <laughs> I guess it's the people I've met. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, sir. Good morning. So, if you consider an atom, and we have a nucleus at the center, and we have electron revolving around the nucleus in a circular orbit, that we know it. When the electron is revolving around the nucleus in a circular orbit, it spins about their own axis. It has got two types of motions. One is orbital, and the other one is spinning. So actually, why electron spins when it is orbiting around the nucleus? That is my question. Yes. All right. Good. Well, you know, the understanding of things develops as, as time goes on. And around 1910, 1911, I think it was, that Rutherford, who's one of the Nobel Prize winners, did some experiments where he was bombarding atoms, really metal, with other materials. And what he found was that, well, what the prevailing theory of an atom was like at the time, I think it was the Lorentz model, was that you just had a cloud of charge there. And so if you bombard a cloud of charge, you would just have little deflection of charges, that's all. But what was striking about this experiment, and I guess gained Rutherford the Nobel Prize, what was striking about this experiment was that they bombarded this cloud, so to speak, and some of the atoms bounced back. Now, no cloud could do that. And so, based on that, they recognized that a correct model of the atom was not a distribution of charge as a cloud, but rather having a small nucleus 
And this way, if you bombard it, there's a certain chance that you can bounce back. As Rutherford said,